Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today's video is a little bit sad because it's all about neglect. Unfortunately, I am totally guilty of it. Since the last video, which was three or four weeks ago, I have done very little in the garden. Um, we've watered it, although we haven't had to do much of that because it's been raining almost every day. And we've just been so busy with work, we've had holidays. All the kids have had their birthdays in the last few weeks. So we've just been so busy, the garden has been neglected and it shows. If the last few weeks has taught me anything, it's taught me that you, you just can't neglect your garden because it doesn't take long for everything just to go horribly wrong. So we'll have a little look around the garden, we'll see what's gone wrong, we'll see what we can rescue, we'll see what we can do to you know, restock where we've lost things. Yeah, just see if we can get this garden into a good shape again. So we'll start with the sugar snap peas. These were doing great. We took a harvest off them and they tasted beautiful. Although I think I've left them too long. They're starting to look a little, well, that's just a dead flower. They'll probably be all right. They will be all right. Although I think I have left them on there too long. But most of the vines, they look like they're dying, they're dead. It's as if they haven't been watered. That's what they look like to me, but they have. We have had torrential rain here for a month, pretty much, unless they've been overwatered. I don't know. But what I'm gonna do today is take these off because um, they're either done or overdone, in my opinion. I will see if they're, they're salvageable. Now, one area that's looking good, actually, is this patch. We have the parsnips, which looks good. We have the potatoes, which again, still look good and healthy. I cleaned out this section, which in the last video was full of weeds and allegedly beetroot. I never seen any sign of any beetroot emerging, so I weeded it and I planted a little row of swede in here. And they have started to come up. I'll have to thin those out obviously, but at least we've got something growing in there. It needs weeded again because they've been in a couple of weeks. But this bed is looking great. As you can see, I still haven't cat proofed it. So we have had problems with cats, but I've been looking out for it each morning when I'm going to work, cleaning any mess up. I have been using black pepper on there, which has helped, but it only works for a few days. Then the rain washes it away and they're back again. So I still need to build something more permanent to protect this bed. Our onions and leeks are looking good as well. There's a lot of weeds in here that I need to sort out. And most of these onions, they're falling over. They look like they're ready to pull out, to be honest. The leeks are growing here, fantastic. I'm just gonna weed this bed, I think, pull up some of the onions and see, see how we're doing with them. But this bed is one of the few areas that hasn't been too badly affected by my neglect. As you'll know, if you've watched any of our last few videos, you'll know that I have been having serious trouble with this broccoli. I don't know how to grow it. I don't know how or if at all that it needs pruned or how to look after it. I had a serious problem with butterfly laying their eggs and caterpillar. Now there doesn't seem to be any broccoli on it whatsoever. The few leaves that, you know, were here have mostly been eaten. It seems to have bolted. There's absolutely no heads on it whatsoever. They've all been completely destroyed. So I think, oh, look at the little bee there. He's making use of it at least anyway. Apart from the bee, nobody's getting any use whatsoever out of this. So I'm literally just gonna take this whole thing out and clear it out. Luckily, the carrots that are at the other side seem to be doing great. So what I think I'm gonna do is clear out all of that broccoli and I might just put in another couple of rows of carrots um, and see if we can get a later harvest of carrots from that because, and I don't think I'm gonna bother with broccoli anymore, not unless I can learn a lot more about it because it's been a bit of a disaster to be honest. Over here we have the other bag of Charlotte potatoes. You'll remember in the last episode I emptied the other bag out. We got a nice harvest and they were delicious as well. This bag I decided to leave for a few more weeks, but it looks dead. It's pretty much died. I don't know what's happened to it because a week and a half ago, it was a big healthy plant. So today we're going to empty this bag out and see if we've got some usable potatoes in there. Fingers crossed we have, and that isn't a waste. We have our fruit bushes over here that are doing fine, just left on their own. And we have all the strawberries that we grew from seed. We have a little something eating some of them. Look how great they are, and up top as well. They're doing great. When I get some time, I'm just gonna check these, pop them on if needs be, find some bigger containers, but the strawberries are looking absolutely fabulous. Not for this year, but for next year, I'm gonna have a lot of strawberry plants. Now then, these are the tomatoes that I bought from the shop. 
and they were just small plants they were on sale because they were almost dead I bought them and look I haven't got a greenhouse for them I was wondering if anything would grow at all but we have got tomatoes on there and it's just been sitting here out in the elements and we haven't had great weather or great sunshine here so the fact that it's grown anything is fantastic and that's the other one that we bought as well and that's got little tomatoes on but a different shape obviously a different type so yeah at least we're getting something off those in the little mini greenhouse here when I put these in they were only sort of this big they've grown through the wire uh, you can see here and here so I'm going to have to untangle this giant mess the same with the peppers that are in the back of there the ones at the back are sort of turning yellow and not looking great so I need to empty this out oh I'm sorry there's a helicopter so the helicopter's gone on its way so yes I'm going to empty this out and see what we can repot salvage and see if we can reorganize this area remember the pepper plant that I bought from the shop on sale I think it was two pounds look how great it's growing it did have a pepper on when I bought it but if you remember I think in the last video or the one before it was rotten so we cut it off but look the others are growing great look how big that one is this one's even started to turn red so I'm looking forward to having some nice bell peppers again I wasn't sure if they would grow because it's not in a greenhouse it's, we do not live in a warm area it's just been sitting here on the path and it's done that without any help from me whatsoever so I'm really pleased with that. If I'd looked after it a bit better I think we would have an even better yield. I don't know if it's wise to repot it now that it's starting to fruit and to have almost ready produce. I'm not sure if I should be messing with it to be honest but it probably could do with a bigger pot, it could do with some pruning but we'll see we'll take a look at it and we'll see here's our sunflowers as you can see they've grown considerably since the last video and one has even flowered the smallest one actually has flowered so that looks good and i'm really looking a lot of, they all have flower buds on flower heads on so i'm looking forward to seeing those all brighten the place up and here out back we have a little blueberry bush that's just in a pot I need to find a more permanent place for it but look the blueberries are starting to ripen so they can be eaten um, so it's nice to see some on there we've had this bush for years we don't normally get any harvest off it because the birds usually take them all and I don't mind them taking them to be honest but this year I think we'll take them ourselves and at least taste them also out back we have those two strawberry plants that I put in the hanging basket and look the runners have already started so I think what I'm going to have to do is get a table or something out here and um, pad in the back and that's our neighbor's dog I'm going to get a table out here put some pots on so that we can we can plant those runners and we'll have even more plants so what we're going to do here is take out these dead stalks or almost dead stalks and see if we've got any usable potatoes I just hope to have it rotted well leaving this bag for longer certainly didn't produce any more potato growth because whatever is grown in here has grown right at the beginning down the bottom there does not seem to be any more potatoes in here further up the top and there was in the first bag which was a month ago oh wow now then charlotte potatoes do not usually grow that big so whilst that does feel firm it's not rotten or anything it definitely i think has been left there too long let's see oh wow this is more like the size you would expect from charlotte potatoes and there are quite a lot here And they seem good they're not rotten they're not soft there's lots of little ones here that would have continued to grow i think but i mean the whole plant was dead surely i should have been digging them up if that's not the case somebody please tell me now these have quite a few blemishes on them i don't know if that's because they've got too wet i'll be able to tell better when i've cleaned them up And that's going to do it and to be honest I think from memory that is less potatoes than what was in the one that I dug up over a month ago 
So these should have really been dug up then probably. They haven't, they haven't produced any more and the plant was dead. So I guess it never was going to produce any more. So there we have it, that's the harvest. Now some of these, they're, they're very, you know, knobbly. I don't know if that's gonna affect the flavor or if it means they've gone a bit old. The first batch I done didn't have that at all. They were more like this one, completely smooth. But we'll definitely eat them, they feel nice and hard. They're not rotten in any way. We'll definitely eat them and see how they turn out. Next job is getting rid of these broccoli plants. I can't look at them any longer, they have to go. the broccoli is no more it didn't take very long five ten minutes to pull all that out cut all the overgrown grass i'm going to put some compost on top of there and see if we can't plant something else in there to grow this year you can actually see the carrots now this row here hasn't developed very well probably because they haven't had much light that was where the cats got in and dug the seeds up so that was never going to grow but these two rows here are looking great look the carrots are popping out of the top you can see them there i might pull some up thin them out a bit we'll have them with those potatoes and see see what they're like look they look pretty big they're going green on the top though what does that mean does that mean they're bad I'm not sure i guess we'll pull them up and find out so next job let's start out these sugar snap peas and regular peas let's see if we can't salvage at least some of these plants maybe they'll grow more i don't know probably not now but we'll cut any peas that are on there off see if they're still good i'm not so sure to be honest uh, we'll dig out that diseased plant cut off all the dead leaves and leave the rest to see what happens so this is the sugar snap pea trellis this is what i managed to take off which potentially is still good we'll have to taste them to find out the plants actually look okay. Some of the leaves are a bit yellow and a bit dried up, but they don't look diseased or bad. They look like they're still alive. I've just sort of separated them a little. Hopefully they'll continue to grow. We'll just have to wait and see. Now I had the camera all set up to record this. Unfortunately, I forgot to press go. So it didn't actually record me taking all this out, but this is basically what I found when I started getting into the peas. This look. It's diseased, it's got to be. I mean, that, oh, that one's left behind. That one looks okay. These are the peas I pulled off. Most of them are black. They might be all right when I open them up, but there's not very many. And I left two plants, that what little one, these two little ones, because they still look to be going good. But all of these I pulled out from the middle. Mum, I think I might have to do a taste test. Our pea trellis is just looking, what? Well, it's very sad, <laughs> isn't it, Rose? Yeah. Rosa's come here to help me. So yeah, it looks sad. I'm really disappointed because they were coming so good. Uh, there is still a bit of hope for the sugar snaps, I guess. But the peas over there, not much hope at all. Um, I'll have to look up what went wrong and see if I can do better next time. So Rose and I are gonna check out these peas, but before we do, Rose, have you seen what's there behind you, which we still haven't eaten? But look, They've formed another big bulb and are really strong in that pot and really healthy. Can you believe that was just from the tiny little off cuts of a shop bar to bring onion? And look how big they are. We're definitely going to eat them soon, Rose. Mm. Okay, so back to these peas. So do you know what to do with peas? You split them yeah. and you see the peas inside. I'm going to eat them. So now at least we know that we were eating the good ones. Yeah, I think. Now the thing is, I don't know whether these taste bad because they're bad, because they're black, they're diseased, or have they just gone like that because we've left them too long and they're too old? Never grown peas before, so I really don't know. The young little ones that were still green tasted really sweet and beautiful. I don't know. We, we, sh we, need, to, we need to look more <laughs> into this to find out. We should get out. Bridget's opinion, shouldn't we? 
Well, Bridget's not here right now. Don't that definitely tasted bad, bad though. The I don't know if this one's bad or good. Should I taste? I think really we should just leave them. They don't, they don't taste great. Okay. We should do it. Well, you give it a try. It's only a little one. That one's good. Okay. So the little ones that are green taste good. Yeah. The big ones, which I think we've left on, Ooh. on the vine too long. Yeah. yeah, don't definitely don't eat that one. No. Okay, so pea harvest, um, a bit of a disaster. These little tiny ones are really nice and juicy. This one only had one pea. Yeah. There's only one way to find out if it's good. Generally speaking, though. I wonder, it's not like as sweet as the others, but it just tastes like a regular Yeah. Good. And Rose and I both really like peas, so that's a real shame that that those haven't turned out great. But you live, you learn, we'll see. We'll learn for next year. Now we have these sugar snap peas. Now, sugar snap peas, when we had the last ones, they're young ones, they're, they're flat. The little um, peas inside are very small, and you just cook the whole thing and eat the whole thing. But I like them. But we've left them to go weird. <laughs> we've left them to go too big, but they're not black like the other ones are. Yeah. So see, sugar snap peas should be flat and they should have hardly any flavor, like that. That's what sugar snap peas should be like, flat. We should we try that one? I mean, you can try it if you want. I don't know what it'll taste like uh, raw. I've never eaten them raw. You're supposed to just eat the whole thing. Oh. Now you had the last ones that I cooked and you said they were yummy, but that's not cooked. Right, they're not as good as the last ones, but they're quite nice. But is that because I haven't cooked them or because... I think it's because you haven't cooked them. Okay, so let's cook these and see if they turn out good then. I'm going to try. And with the peas, let's throw them all away because they're gross. <laughs> yeah, the little ones. No, I put some big or bad ones in there. Those little ones, they're good to eat. We'll cook these and see if they turn out good. I want to try a thick one. No, don't try a thick one. Mm. Well, we'll cook them and you can try them. That's a Yeah, leave them, leave them there. We'll I cook them. <laughs> well, yeah, you can eat it if you want to eat it. We'll just take off the stuff. Nice. We Chewy? probably should have washed these first as well. Yeah. Chewy, but nice. Okay. Well, let's cook the rest and see if they see what they turn out like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Rose, next job we're going to try and preserve some of these onions. So we'll try. We'll start with these ones here because they look big enough. They might grow bigger, but they look okay. What do you think? Yeah. They've already fallen over. Some of the ends have sort of come off. Now, what we want to do is try and preserve these. So we need to dry them out. So we need to pull them out like that. Mm -hmm. And then we need to hang them or lay them somewhere that's cool and dry so that they can completely dry out for a few weeks. You're gonna pull one? Mm -hmm. This one's Just like really weak, so I'm trying not to break the stem. Ah, oh. you got it? Yep. Cool, let's just lay them on the side. We'll pull each one up. Okay, so, I'll we've, go get the so we've got a few out and we've looked at some YouTube videos on how to dry these out so that we do it correctly. So hopefully we're gonna do that with a few of these before we pull up some of the others. So you grab all those onions, Rose, and we'll go find somewhere to hang them to dry them out. Okay, so we've got the onions, so I think what we want to do is leave some of the stalk till it's dried out, but we can cut some of it off and okay. cut off some of the roots so that there's just a short little bit. So that's what we need to do first. And if I'm doing this wrong, please somebody tell me before I do the other ones. done this correctly these are our onions we've got oh, ah, we've lost one get that little red one and this is what we're going to do to try and dry them out to preserve them so you'll have to excuse our very messy shed um, but what I've done is I've put two bamboo poles across the top of here because I figured this is a dry place it's you know it's airy because we do have the door open most days um, and I thought this would be a good place to hang them and if this works 
if we just slot them in there like that and leave them like that yeah. and that it's means the you're gonna call it ready <laughs> and that means that hopefully the air will get around them so they can dry out so hopefully if we leave them like this they'll have enough airflow around them and they'll dry out put that one there you're gonna put ready in go on then can you get in now probably what I should do is tie, get a cable tie or something and tie it together so that nobody knocks it with their head when they're trying to get some of this junk that we keep in here I'm thinking that might be a good place to air these out and to dry them out but we'll see what do you we'll think see. we'll see <laughs> So I'm just doing a little tidy up of the carrot patch and weeding it, getting all this glass out. Is that? Oh, wow, that's a decent size. Slug on it, let's get that slug off. That's a decent size carrot, isn't it? That's not bad. Give that other one room to grow. Let's see what else. We've got three all in a row here. Let's pull the middle one out. Oh no. Oh no, I've pulled the top right off and not the carrot. Let's see why that won't come. Oh wow, that is stuck right in. Oh, not particularly big, so I don't know why that was stuck. Oh, look what else we've got. Two really close together here. I probably should have thinned these out earlier than this. I don't think this is gonna be anything. Oh well, yeah, still, still enough to eat have a look there's a lot of this grass in here what else have we got two right next to each other here i haven't done a very good job at thinning these out in the first place have i oh i've pulled an absolute baby out which i didn't mean to and i've pulled the top off let's see if we can find that one there it is there we go not a bad size I really haven't done a great job of growing these, to be honest. I haven't done a good job at thinning them out, or spacing them out, or just looking after them in general. So here we are, this is just to, to thin them out really, but we'll definitely eat those. Let's give them a wash. So we've just tidied this area up, put the fruit bushes back. These really need tending to. This area is clear. I'm probably going to put some more Swedo carrot in there, but not now. I'm going to have to put the net back around to keep the caps off that. Those onions I'm going to leave for a little while longer to make sure that my drying out process is okay. The parsnips and potatoes are fine. They're gonna, I'm gonna start digging these potatoes up soon, I think. I think they're ready and we'll see what we've got. I'm not really sure. That could be the end of the piece, to be honest. We have three fruit bushes in the corner here that are doing great. I'm just going to leave those for now. The strawberries probably need splitting up and potting on. But again, I'm running out of time. Here we have some peppers. Look how great these peppers are. I really like them. Peppers and tomatoes. The last thing I'm going to do for today's video and for this evening is empty out this greenhouse and try and untangle these um, tomato plants and the peppers and just see if we can get that in some sort of order so that the plants are healthy. So this is what we have. We have a tomato plant that looks pretty healthy, pretty good. That can go back in there. We have these. This is a mixture of two tomatoes and some peppers. They've been stuck at the back. They haven't got enough light. They're in pots that are too small. We're going to pot those on. Then we have these two tomato plants. I really struggled a little because they had intertwined through the actual shelf, but I've managed to get them out. They need to be um, potted on, I think. They need to be, you know, have a stronger star um, cane in there to hold them up. I need to take off these little shoots. So let's get, uh, let's get started with these. But these are really healthy plants and they absolutely smell gorgeous. There's a few flowers on them, not many, um, but I think we'll definitely get some tomatoes from them. And I think they're big and strong enough to come out of the little mini greenhouse now. Well, they wouldn't fit back in if I wanted them to. So they're gonna come out, they're gonna get repotted and go back in. Let's get cracking. So I only have two of these bigger pots left, which we're going to put the two big plants in. 
Uh, they're not that much bigger than the plants, um, the pots that they're in currently, to be honest, um, but they're the only size I have right now. So we're just gonna drill some drainage holes and then put them in. done here is potted on the two biggest plants the ones that were at the bottom of the greenhouse that were tangled in the shelf I've put them in the two big pots I only had another two of this size pot so I picked my two best looking pepper plants basically the two that were flowering that one uh, sorry no one pepper and one tomato here and then Oh yes, I did have three and another pepper here. I picked the two that look like they had the best chance of survival. I did manage to pot on everything else into slightly bigger pots, but they're not ideal. They need bigger pots than this, but I've totally run out of pots. So I've put them in the biggest pots that I have available, which isn't great. Hopefully they'll survive. I'm not sure about these tomato plants. They're way too small this time of the year. They probably won't survive, but I keep them anyway because I love the smell. Now these ones here, the big ones, look at the size of some of these. These were like the, the suckers, the offshoots. Look at the size of them. This is what happens when you neglect your plants. So what I'm going to do, the big ones clearly will not fit back in the greenhouse. I'm going to put all of these smaller ones back in there. The big ones are now gonna join these other ones, which are doing okay on the outside. And we're probably gonna call that a night. that's it for this video guys we have got some more something else to plant in there for next time we've got the rest of the onions to harvest we've got the potatoes to harvest and check out these doesn't that look great now with all those outside i'm not sure how much harvest we're going to get off those because we are in the middle of august and we live in a pretty cold place so who knows but hopefully we'll get something we've got our beds proofed again but alas <laughs> I have still not cat proofed the potato bed. I've just run out of time. So before we go to bed, we're just gonna give it a little bit of cat proofing. And this does seem to work guys, but when it rains, it washes it away and they come back. If it hadn't been raining so much, I think this might have worked permanently, to be honest. I think I'm gonna have these dug up before I end up cat proof in the area. Anyway, we're going to call it a day, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.